welcome, welcome to my Coastal Crochet vlog. This is vlog number three and I'm Eleonora from Coastal Crochet. So if you're here because you're making my winter walk scarf crochet along, then you are very, very welcome. I'm recording this video on Sunday, the 21st of November, and this scarf crochet along is kicking off on Wednesday. But by the time I get these videos edited, I'll probably release it the same day as the crochet along. So if you're watching this now, part one of this winter walk scarf is over on my website. Um, and over the next 12 days, we will be crocheting this really lovely scarf together. So all the details for the first part of the pattern are on my website. Um, and that's where each day I will be releasing another part. Um, you can also purchase the pattern over on my Ravelry, one payment, and then I update that each day over the next 12 days. This is the one made um, from yarns by independent yarn dyer Kirsten from Miss Moffat Yarns. And this is what inspired the, the whole scarf for me. Um, yeah, all the details about it are over on my website. But this was the original, stunning yarns. And I'm wearing another version I made using Stylecraft Special DK. So enjoy the winter walk scarf. Um, I'm going to carry on chatting for a little bit, uh, chatting all things crochet, things I've been up to. Um, but yeah, if you want to get crocheting, maybe get the first part of the scarf. You can maybe um, crochet that while, while you listen to me chat. So what have I been up to? Last time I recorded the vlog, um, Emu Yarns um, that are exclusively available from the Knitting Network had sent me some of their chunky and super chunky balls. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you would have seen that I started making hats with the super chunky yarn. This one is one I made for my husband and he really really likes wearing it. Um, and I haven't stopped there. I, um, I keep making hats now from, well, it's not really a pattern. Um, it's so simple. It is literally rows of half treble. That's US half double crochet. Just row upon row upon row of half treble stitches, but into the back loops only. And then what you get is this lovely ridged, stretchy, super stretchy fabric. Um, my husband's one I didn't make with a brim, so he wears it without a brim. I can show you a photo now. There he is at our local park one. Um, but my one I made a bit longer, so I had 29 stitches with this one, 24 with my husband's. Um, and so with this one, I could get a, a brim. So let me just put this on to show you. There you go. <laughs> it's the perfect winter hat, perfect for a winter walk. And I felt it needed a little pom-pom. So I created a pom-pom. Um, to put on the top of this one. I make my pom-poms using one of these. I think I got it free with a magazine many years ago and actually it's really, really useful. I've used it a lot. Um, lots of different ways you can make pom-poms, of course, the old fashioned way with good old cardboard and scissors. Um, but yeah, I made a pom-pom using this here. And I'm really pleased with it. Um, I also made this one. This was using yarn. One, one ball, these are all one ball. Let me show you how much I had left. So this is all I had left from um, one ball of the Emu Super Chunky yarn. So I just kept going, um, that's all I had left. But it's really super stretchy. So as you can see, um, it could have been made a little bit smaller potentially, but actually for very big heads, there's a lot of stretch there. So yeah, I've been making hats. Um, yes, this one was from Yarn in Germany. So the very last time pre-pandemic that we went abroad, um, we went to the Black Forest in Germany and I bought this from a local yarn shop. Uh, one ball, no plans what to do with it, but I really, really loved it. Loved the colours and loved the texture. There's a lot of wool content in this one, so it's super, super warm. But I have to be a little bit braver to wear it because the textured yarn makes it look a little bit like a tea cosy, I do feel. Um, so I have to be a little bit braver when wearing this one, but um, it's super soft, really lofty and super warm. 
So, to all this talk of winter walks and woolly hats, we've actually had surprisingly mild weather here in the last few weeks, but today it's actually turning cold and the weather forecast tells me that the, the week coming, it's going to be really, really cold. So maybe we will get our winter hats and scarves out here in the northern hemisphere. So, but yeah, here's some footage. Let me show you um, some footage from a walk we enjoyed yesterday. Really peaceful, really calm seas. So since I last chatted to you, I've been to Yak, which stands for Yarn and Knitting. It's a really gorgeous independent yarn shop in Brighton and Hove, which is the nearest big city to where I live. Um, it's not actually a big city, it's a small city, um, but Brighton and Hove does have city status and we're just along the coast from Brighton. So gorgeous independent yarn shop and I love hosting workshops. So um, I put a little bit of footage together for you. Um, and actually also we drove out to Brighton and I, the sun was setting and so I did some footage for you there as well. So enjoy this. It's a really lovely yarn shop um, and I've done a crochet shawl along um, workshop which has been so so lovely and really relaxing for me to take part in as well with um, with people crocheting crocheting shawls we've we've yeah we've crocheted lots of different shawls and actually um, we've also started the winter walk scarf so another very exciting thing is that I'm hosting a giveaway over on Instagram so this is only on Instagram it's difficult to run giveaways across different platforms, so I haven't included Facebook. Um, but if you want a chance to win this gorgeous starfish silver necklace um, made by the natural silver company, Nikki, um, a very small business, independent jewellery designer um, and seller. I've collaborated with her and I love these sort of giveaways because um, everyone benefits. I'm able to... Uh, get one of my followers to win a gorgeous piece of sterling silver jewellery. I don't know if you can get the detail here, um, probably not, we're not really focusing, but it really is stunning. And Nikki creates her jewellery from um, casts of actual things she finds on the Cornish beaches, so it really has loads of texture and detail, it's stunning. Um, so yeah, I love that one of my followers gets the chance to win one of these. Um, it also it allows Nikki to get lots of new followers and potentially new custom and what I get out of it is is I get a necklace out of it so um, Nikki has sent me this one for me to photograph um, for the giveaway which I've done and then I get to keep this one of my followers gets one 
and Nikki gets lots of customers. So it's a win-win and something I'm really happy to take part in. I do get asked a lot to do giveaways, um, all kinds of companies, you'd be amazed. Um, tights, shapewear, underwear, um, sports things, pets. I get a few pet contacts sometimes, obviously because of Love Your Little Salty. Um, but they just don't feel in keeping with my with my sort of crochet business and, and my crochet design work. But when Nikki contacted me, it was a uh, yes, that definitely goes hand in hand. And let me show you what I photographed it with. Um, I love tins. This tin is where I keep my coastal Christmas decorations in that I crocheted. Um, and here are the starfish. So yes, I photographed the necklace together with my crocheted starfish. Now this pattern, my coastal Christmas patterns, um, I love them. I designed these a few years ago now, I think it was back in 2018, and we have a jellyfish, a starfish, we have little beach hats, um, and we have little life boys that are been Christmased, Christmased up with uh, a little bit of a garland at the top. So I love these. Um, gorgeous colours using cotton, which is Scapius Katona cotton. And they're really lovely. So these are a pattern that, that sells very well um, over on my Etsy and my Ravelry. And each year, yeah, they're a little flowy for these coastal Christmas decorations. So the pattern is still there. I'm always looking to the next thing. I sometimes forget to talk about things from from the past, things that I've crocheted um, that are still available as patterns. So there we go. There's my coastal Christmas decorations. I've also been sent a book to review, um, but they sent me a digital copy, so I haven't got the book to show you here. Um, but yes, they sent me a digital copy and I can show you now. It's The Art of Tunisian Crochet by Pauline Turner. Now, Pauline Turner um, holds a special place in my heart for me because she um, runs the International Diploma in Crochet, which I've done two parts of. I am enrolled on part three, but time and my design work just means I haven't been able to commit to it yet. But Pauline has taught me an awful lot about crochet and techniques, um, brilliant, you know, things that otherwise might have been, been lost. So I'm very grateful to her and this is her, her latest book which I can wholeheartedly recommend. It's um, not the most modern Tunisian crochet book, some of the designs um, aren't as colourful and sort of modern as some books are presented, but the content in the book is incredible. There's so much detail and information about the history of Tunisian crochet, um, different stitch patterns, the structure of the stitches. It really is incredible. So if you want to know about Tunisian crochet, this really is a book that's going to teach you lots. I love Tunisian crochet. This is a cushion I designed for Crochet Now magazine, um, also a few years ago. Um, you can get some really crisp colour changes in Tunisian crochet. So I really, really like it. Um, there is a pattern in the book um, for a filet crochet Tunisian shawl. Um, it's very lacy. I always think of Tunisian crochet as a very dense fabric, but I forget that actually you can use it for quite lacy fabrics and different techniques. So definitely a book I can recommend um, and I have been sent the digital copy not the paper one <laughs> um, what else is there to share with you um, yes there's a new not a new design but there's a new project on my hooks I was sent um, well I was asked by the knitting network if I could do a new colorway of an old design of mine uh, maybe some of you can guess what that is now and these are the colours I chose and we had a perfect day earlier in the week where I could um, photograph these gorgeous balls of yarn by the beach and with a little salty too. <laughs> So 
So they are the colours. I've actually replaced one. So I started the project. I can get a few out here. These are all Emu Classic DK. I started the project and as I was crocheting it, I thought I wanted to substitute one of the colours that you see on the beach there with another one. So here we go. Here are all the colours. They've already been crocheted into. The ball bands are gone. Um, oh, I'm so, so enjoying this one. It is, well, I can give you a quick sneak peek. It is my seaside stash busting blanket in an all new colorway. Really, really excited about this. Um, and it's so joyous to crochet it again. It's been four years. It'll be four years in January um, since we started this crochet along. And I've made so many friends through this blanket, through that original seaside stash busting blanket crochet along. Um, people that are still very dear to me, people that have crocheted along with all my other crochet alongs, um, really special. So for me to be crocheting it again is, is wonderful, really relaxing, although I'm making it smaller. Over the years, one of the most common requests I get, um, or questions, one of the, a question that comes up on a weekly basis is, I'd love to do your seaside stash busting blanket, how can I make it smaller? What's the stitch multiple? Now there is no stitch multiple with this one because for those of you who took part, um, it was made up as I went along. It was a 35 week crochet along. I started with 180 stitches and I kept consistent with that 108. And so, um, yeah, adjusted the turning chains and the stitches to, to, you know, try and keep the edges as straight as possible. So it's not a case of, oh, you can do a multiple of six or eight plus one or seven. It really is each row is adjusted to keep consistent with your stitch count. But I thought, let's actually design one which is smaller. So this one is based on 156 stitches. So it's not a, it's not hugely smaller, but it is smaller. Still a lovely, lovely size. Um, but it is almost like a new design because I'm having to um, start with different turning chains um, there are different stitch multiples so the rows will begin and end differently to the original blanket the rows are the same but it, it's the start and finish that i'm having to adjust um, but i'm really really pleased with how it's going so it's the same blanket but it's different um, joyous for me to crochet um, as you can see i've still got a little way to go but I'm hoping, um, together with the Knitting Network, to release this as a kit, um, hopefully in January, um, after Christmas. It gives me a chance to finish it and get some photos taken and get the pattern finalised, because it will be a new pattern, um, because the starts and ends of, of the rows. So the pattern will also be available without the, the yarn um, directly from me too. Um, but yes, um, the Knitting Network are going to be releasing that as a kit for me to add to my collection page that I have with them. So, so that's really exciting and I'm really, really enjoying crocheting this. Um, there's a couple of other projects on my hooks that I can't share with you yet. They're for their commissions, one for a magazine and um, one other really exciting commission that I can't share. Not for a little while actually, but they are on my hooks and keeping keeping me busy. So I think we've covered lots there. Um, anything else to share with you? Yes, how can I forget? Three magazines. Right, where are they? I'll be back in a moment. Here we go. Three magazines. Um, they were all in the shop at the same time and I had a design on the front cover of each of these magazines which was hugely exciting for me. The moment almost passed me by. I didn't realise that they would all coincide at the same time but I was in a local newsagent um, and as you can see here I have, but I was in there looking for the Women's Weekly Christmas special where my festive joy blanket um, is in and there it is on the front cover. I also then noticed that yes, I had my mosaic mittens on the front cover of Inside Crochet magazine and my Santa hat and mittens on the front cover of Simply Crochet. Um, I think last time I did the vlog, 
I didn't have the Simply Crochet magazine, but here it is. And there's the Santa hat and mittens in there. Um, really fun design. And what I really loved is that they found a, a little cute baby toddler to, um, to model the Santa hat and mittens. So yeah, really special that I was on the, well not me, but my designs were on the cover of three magazines at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen very often, if ever again. Um, so I really saved at the moment. And yes, I did end up buying, buying all three copies at the same time, just for the fun of it. Um, yeah, that's exciting. Before I go, Kimmy, gorgeous, Kimmy, I just want to show you little Salty. She's been out walking with my husband while I've been doing this vlog, um, but they've just come back. So before I go, here's little Salty. Hey, come say hello. Different ones there. Look that way. <laughs> so, um, thank you for listening. That was quite a, a chat. Enjoy the winter walk scarf over the next 12 days. Um, enjoy your crochet and your creativity. Don't forget you can enter um, the giveaway on my Instagram to, to win a silver starfish necklace. Happy crocheting, happy creating, and um, I hope you manage to keep calm and keep creative over the coming festive seasons. So take care. Mm -hmm.